Okay, guys, how's it going out there? Rooster and Tim, RoosterCB.com. Customer complimentary test video before we ship this out. This is a Quad 5 N2 that sold last week, and we're going to get it shipped out to the customer today. Again, I do always like to double check these after they've been fully upgraded before they leave here to make sure we don't have anything kind of crazy going on. And we are going to test it at 14.8 volts. Reason we're testing at 14.8 volts, that's the maximum I recommend someone to really run these at, 14.8 to 15 volts. So if anything crazy is going to show up due to you running at higher voltage, I want it to show up here. That's not to milk it for power or any kind of stuff like that. I mean, I'll be open with you guys. Bird 43P, chances are if you're running a different kind of meter, your readings are going to be different. If you're running a Daiwa or something, they may show a little more. If you're running a Dosi, it may show a little less. But we do like test at 14.8 volts to make sure if you're going to be running the maximum voltage, you're not going to have any kind of hiccups going on with the radio. Again, it is a fully upgraded all the way Quad 5 N2. I do have one more of these left right now. Average power mod, uh, modulation mod, the uh, AM regulator upgrade, which we're using a Palomar Max mod in this, and the final upgrade. Okay. And then, of course, go into the service menu and make sure everything is adjusted properly the way we recommend it. Again, I have shown how to get in the service menu. If you get one of these and you say, man, I'd really like my dead key to be a little bit lower on load, you can always go in the service menu and do that. However, I do keep up with where we've got these adjusted at. So if you have trouble out of one of these and you send it back and the service menu numbers are all crazy and all, all over the place, uh, definitely going to know that you got in there monkeying around and adjusting stuff you shouldn't. The service menu on these radios is no different than getting in another radio and turning it with a screwdriver. Okay, that's if you get stuff out of whack, it can really get, get haywire on you. Recommended amps. I recommend to run with one of these. 4 pill 2879 standard or 6 pill 2879 standard. Maybe a 2 pill 2879C, but if that's the option you decide to go, you need to be very careful because they can do a excess amount of power. Okay, that being said, uh, let's get into the actual performance of the radio and we'll do as we usually do. We'll start out on AM and we're gonna have a 100 watt slug in our meter. So that means we're gonna be looking at the bottom scale. We will check average power and we will check uh, PEP power. So 100 watt slug, bottom scale. This is average power with the, the uh, carrier wide open. Okay, so that's what, 23, 24 watts, something like that. Hello, audio, audio, and it'll out audio to about 50. If we're just talking in the mic normal, hello, radio, audio, radio, audio, 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 check, 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 audio, about 40 or so, which is a big improvement. Uh, if you've seen one of these, I have done a video on one of these stock. And what you end up getting when you have one stock, it doesn't matter if you adjust the modulation in the uh, service menu or not. When they're stock, you're going to get about five watts or so, or so of average power going forward. So that means if you're dead key in 20 watts, you're going to see about 25 watts average. Versus on this one, hello, you know, you go from 24 to 25 watts to 50 or so. Uh, here's your PEP. Hello, one, two, three, audio, one, two, three, audio. Now it's showing about 100 watts plus PEP. I will tell you guys, even though these and the 955s essentially are using the same board as kind of their base, these will show a little bit less power, both on AM and on sideband. They show just a little bit less. Now that said, they're a fraction of the price of a 955, so losing 10 or 15 watts really shouldn't be that big of a deal to somebody. But if that's a deal breaker for you, then, you know, maybe the 955 is the way to go, but you're paying several hundred extra dollars just to get a little bit more power and essentially the same board. Of course, this is a menu driven radio and the 955 is pr primarily a, a traditional style radio, uh, if you will. Uh, back to our power output, we're kind of bouncing all over the place here, getting off subject, but just like to add some stuff in as we go along. If we turn our RF power halfway, Okay, you see that's like a 10 watt dead key. Hello. 
and it still swings to 30, okay? So we're three times average power. Now, if you say, well, the average power dropped down, did the PEP drop down with it? No, it really probably didn't. Audio, audio, check, 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 check. Really still right there around 100 watts. It dropped down just a shade, but not really a, a significant amount. Now, if you turn this radio all the way down, it will fall off. When you've got the RF power all the way down on one of these, just the way they work, they will fall off. Audio, check, 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 check. Audio, audio, check, 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 check. You know, 60 watts, 70 watts with it all the way down. And of course, your average power, hello, is going to come down with it. So you got 10 watts of average. Okay, that's just the way they work. Even though the modulation mod and everything's been done to them, once you get to a certain point, turn the power down, the power will come down on them some. And most people, you know, they're not going to care. They're going to like that anyway. So um, that's the way it works on AM. We can show you the output on sideband. We'll turn the RF power wide open here, uh, upper sideband. Now, one thing I'll tell you guys I like to check for on sideband, I've mentioned this before. Once you do these upgrades, these radios, a lot of times you have to go in the service menu and make some adjustments or you'll get some sort of oscillation sometimes, okay? There was somebody that commented a long time ago, and they said, you can't upgrade the finals in those radios because they oscillate when you do. That's partially true, but you, there's things that you can do to prevent that, okay? It's not just to drop it in, set it, and forget it with these finals. You actually have to go into the service menu and tweak some stuff, okay? Uh, so, yes, it can be done. We've been doing it, you know, pretty much nonstop since these radios came out. And, you know, hundreds of radios sold with probably, you know, less than five failures between these and the 955. So, you know, failures are going to happen. But, yeah, we don't really have that too much. We always like to double check these before we ship them out. So what I do to double check them, I turn the RF power wide open. And, again, that's another reason why I run the voltage at 14.8 volts, you know, or 15 volts to make sure you're not going to encounter this issue when you get the radio. Okay, so average power on sideband, uh, bottom scale. Ooh. You see, a lot of power. That's wide open now. Ooh. You know, 9 amps, 10 amps uh, worth of current draw. If you say, well, that's what's doing average, what's it do PEP? They're going to be pretty close to the same. Audio, over 100 PEP, 80 watts average. Yes, average power is a factor on sideband, okay? If you don't believe that, you will blow your shit up not paying attention to it, okay? I'm just being very blunt and straightforward. If you're one of those people that tells me that PEP is the only measurement that matters on sideband, and I don't know who put that in your head, you're going to blow something up. And I'm just telling you up front right now, people that go against the grain and tell me that, that PEP is the only thing that matters on sideband, you can do that, and you're going to have trouble. <laughs> uh, let's see what it does. Halfway open here. So this is PP. Uh, sideband RF power is halfway open. Hello, audio. Okay. So we're still doing right around 100 watts. PP. Hello, audio. Audio. See how our average power came down? 20 to 30 watts. That's the difference, Okay. That is the difference in running one of these wide open and running it halfway open. That's why people blow stuff up sometimes when they go to sideband and they think, well, whatever, I'm just going to turn RF power wide open because I have no dead key on sideband. So, you know, it doesn't really matter where I run this because I don't have a dead key on sideband. 100 watts PEP is 100 watts. That's not true. Okay, there's a difference between 100 watts PEP and 25 and 30 watts average versus 100 watts PEP and 80 watts average, okay? And if you don't believe that, let's take it a step further. You guys just saw the radio is doing a little bit less PEP, but not much, but it's doing a lot less average. So remember, when it was wide open, we were drawing, what, 9 amps, 10 amps? Let's see what we're drawing now. Oh, almost half. So there you guys go. But uh, that's the performance of the radio. Again, customer's been really patient. He texted me yesterday and asked me, uh, you know, when he could expect to get it. And I just told him, hey, I like to check these out before I ship them. I like to go through them. And it doesn't hurt to do a video on one when we only have one left right now. So uh, when that one sells, 
probably four or five weeks, we'll have some more ready. Um, but after, you know, once that one sells, it's going to be a few weeks before we get some more in. So I uh, have one more left in stock. If you like the way this radio does, uh, it is one of my favorites out there, Quad 5 N2 for the performance you get. And I will always say this, uh, as far as the, uh, the performance on sideband for the sideband operators out there, <clears throat> these are a poor man's HF rig. Uh, they're probably actually better uh, because of the power they produce. Um, don't go, if you're just a CBer and you talk on sideband, don't go blow your money on an ICOM 7300 unless you just like the, the display and all that stuff, okay? If you're just looking for something that strictly sounds good on sideband and produces good power, all these Anytone radios are going to be almost indistinguishable on sideband. Okay, ask me how I know. I just sold an ICOM 7700 that was almost $7,000 when it was brand new. Okay, I just sold it for $2,500. And if I decide I want to talk on sideband, I'm going to hook up one of these because I've talked to people on sideband that run these, and I can't tell the difference between one of these and an ICOM. Can't justify the price, okay? To me, if you want to talk sideband, get you any tone. It's going to be hard to beat. All right, guys, appreciate it. Rooster in 10, roostercb.com. Hopefully I didn't bore you to death with this video. Everybody have a good one. More to come. See you, bye.